All right, welcome back everyone to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on 88.3 The Saint. It is Friday. I am your host this week, Mary Kate Weaver, one of the Associate Directors in Alumni Engagement. Before we get into the interview, I wanted to let you know if you are listening to us on the radio, you probably know that this is also a podcast. All you have to do is head to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts and search the Saints and Alumni Show. You'll see every show we've done for the past two years all on demand. There are a lot of great alumni and a lot of great stories, so please take a look. Today, I'm happy to introduce my co-host, Brittany Kane. Thanks, Mary Kate. I'm Brittany Kane, the Associate Director of the Annual Fund Team. I'm happy to be here today and even more excited to introduce Sue Hannon from the class of 1993. Sue is one of our Alumni Weekend Ambassadors, which we'll get into a little bit later in the show. But uh, first off, Sue, we'll start with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up at Siena? I know we are all alum here, kind of all have a different story. So how did you end up at Siena? <clears throat> Um, my story is kind of funny. My, I was, I did a search of schools, you know, within like a two hour radius, <clears throat> went to see Siena because my brother went to Siena, but he is much older than me and he graduated in 80. Um, and so I went there as a courtesy, whatever, <laughs> went to SUNY Albany, walked off the tour because it was too big, um, went home, wanted to play softball, had a couple of options, um, didn't get into one of the schools. So then I couldn't play there. And I was literally sitting in the pool in my backyard and I told my mom, I'm going to Siena because it was down to Siena and another school uh, because it was a thousand dollars cheaper. I think about that now and it makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> and that that's my story. And when I went to campus on the first day, I didn't even recognize it because I didn't even give it a chance the first time around. And as we can all see, I fell in love. From that day forward, um, pretty pretty simple, but a good story. <laughs> wow, yeah, I didn't, I did not think I wanted to go to Siena either. I am originally from this area, and I was like, I want to get away. I know Brittany, you are too. Um, and I looked like two, three hours away, and every school is just too big and too too far away for me. And I ended up at Siena. So, but I didn't decide until literally April thirtieth, like the day before. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I was the exact same way. So it's funny. Um, awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing now um, after Sienna in, in your career? Sure. I, I have a couple of different things. My main career um, is I'm a school counselor. Uh, this is my 22nd year at Rhinec High School in Mamarinec, New York. Uh, I was a school count. I am a school counselor. I've been for uh, those 22 years. And for the past two years, I am the school counseling department chairperson. Um, and uh, that's been gratifying, but extremely busy. Um, I also have, uh, I also coach. I coach here at Rhinec. I coach the JV soccer team, girls, and I also coach Mamaroneck uh, softball varsity team. I was a varsity, I was a softball player at Siena, and then I went on to coach at Manhattan College, uh, and then I, when I got here, I was able to, to latch on here for coaching softball, but Cross down rival, job opened up, and the funny story is we both opened up today against each other. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> you have a busy day. I do, and I have kids coming in saying good luck. I guess I'm not <laughs> sure because they know they have to root for Ryan because that's where I work, but they know that I'm going to coach over there. So it's been a fun day at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Um, so, you know, you are a guidance counselor, so I'm sure you help students all the time uh, pick out, you know, what school they want to go to, uh, walk them through the college search process. Can you talk a little bit about what you tell people, um, you know, about Siena and just the culture search process in general? Sure. These days, it's, it's really hard for students. Um, they have to uh, come up with a list. You know, and we start with a starter list, which involves some of their interests and criteria, and those criteria could be, you know, urban, suburban, small, large, public, private. Um, so part of the job is they come up with some schools that they're thinking about, their parents come up with some schools they're thinking about. And then as a counselor, we try to think about the student as a whole and, and some of the suggestions that we, we can come up with and try to come up with the most diverse list for them. And that's usually something that happens um, between January and April of their junior year so that they can take the time to plan visits during February break, um, spring break, because we also, we want to encourage them to, to do the visits when there are students on campus and students that would actually attend the school. Mm -hmm. um, the process is different. Each student says, well, I want to go to the best school. Like, what are the best schools I can apply to? And, and, and the response is always, it's not, 
the best school. It's the one that kind of gives you the best feel um, where you think you can be successful because whatever you put in is what you're going to get out of it, whether you go mm -hmm. to one of the most competitive schools in the country or the least competitive schools in the country. Um, from my end, uh, Sienna comes up. I am good about not putting it on everybody's list, <laughs> which is hard not to do. Uh, but you know, Sienna is 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 a place for certain kids. It's not it's not mm -hmm. for everybody, and I and I know that because I went there and I know what the feel is. <clears throat> you know, it's got to be someone. It's got to be someone who is interested, you know, in a liberal arts education. You know, if they're mm -hmm. really looking into a research institution, not a good fit. But you know, a lot of kids today are respecting that liberal arts uh, uh, curriculum. My funny story is when I started here. Uh, that's the first time we realized that Siena was a liberal arts school. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no wonder why I'm so well-rounded. <laughs> now I understand why. Um, you know, and it's a school where, it, you know, everything is very heavy on service. Uh, you know, so they have to be that type of student who believes in that. And we are lucky we have a community service requirement here. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that I can tap into if I think it's a good fit. Um, you know, I know that it's from my own experience that I became a, a, a really good, I don't know, problem solver, I guess, maybe mm -hmm. the critical thinking might be that. And I, and I tried to encourage the kids that are doing that now, or who may need a, a push in that direction to kind of consider that, you know, the, the Franciscan values are huge um, uh, consideration. Religious school's not for everybody, but I, I mm -hmm. always say, you know, you're not pounded in with, um, the religious aspect, but there's going to be some guys walking around in robes. So, you know, are you going to be comfortable with that? And, you know, you don't have to take Catholicism as your religion class. There's a whole array of religious classes. So, you know, I try to, those who are scared of or don't want to go in that direction, um, give them reasons to consider it, you know, and it's small size being in a suburb, you know, easy access to a lot of stuff that's going on in Albany, I mean, it, to me, it's 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 just a great fit for so many. Again, not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I think is really cool about Sienna is that it has been able to keep its small size and, and, and keep those values close to heart because it realizes that, you know, it's it's a school for many, not all. Um, but I it, it does pop up on my list for the right kids. And I've also been fortunate. Uh, actually, this year I have three or four kids whose parents went to Siena. <laughs> um, and I don't think I have any coming up after this, but who are alum. And uh, it's been kind of fun working with them too. Um, so th those are those are really the biggest reasons why uh, I would recommend Siena and what I do tell the students when they're considering it or I'm putting it on their list. Yeah, so you told us a little bit about how you found Siena, um, kind of how you Talk about Sienna in your career, um, but just going back to your time at Sienna, um, kind of quickly, do you have a favorite Sienna memory that comes to mind? I know there's a lot of traditions here. We have Sienna Fest, Homecoming Weekend. Um, so going back to your day, do you have anything that stands out to you? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, we didn't have those when I was there <laughs> back in the day. Um, we did have uh, so we did have Spring Fest, which was always a great time with the bands on campus. I'm um, really good friends had a band. Um, so that was um, one of the greatest weekends of the time while we were there. Um, I, there's a ton of memories. Um, one that kind of jumped out though, and I guess that that would be it, it was a, <laughs> we've had a powder puff football game. I'm, I was a dorm war. So it was uh plasmid versus Hennepin, I think, or one of those that we were playing at the time. And like our guy friends, they were the coaches. And of course they were on the football team because there was one of those back then too. <clears throat> um, and that was a lot of fun because it, it created, like it was just women out there playing a sport. And, <clears throat> you know, some of us were at, more athletic than others. And that was obvious out there. There was a huge competitive nature for bragging rights. I mean, back then there was only the four main dorm dormitories. So that was like a big deal. And uh, I just remember like the guys being like, Oh my God, did you like see that throw? Oh my God, did you see that catch? You know, we got to wear their, you know, little uniforms and, you know, that, that was definitely something that jumped out. Um, mine are going to be mostly around sports. Another one would be, I played intramural sports for four years, everyone mm -hmm. under the sun. And I finally won a championship, very competitive me. I actually ran the intramural program back then. Yes, a student oh. ran the intramural <laughs> department. 
and uh, finally won in my last sport of my senior year. We had a floor hockey and we finally, finally won a championship. And uh, it was the greatest day ever in that three cards. Uh, other than that, it was, uh, it was great. And just every memory is fantastic. And I guess those are jumping out as the most um, at this point in time. Yeah, no, that's great. It's always interesting to hear just the different storylines. You know, I'm from the class of 2021, Mary Kate's from the class of 2016. So we just like to, you know, always hear the differences. And I know there's new traditions now, but a lot of those traditions you talked about, we did not have when we were students. So right. it's kind of cool to see the evolution of Saints and how we've, you know, come along. Um, so uh, cutting shortly soon, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the newly uh, rebranded Alumni Weekend. Um, Mary Kate's going to give a little bit about that. We have some cool giveaway items we're going to be giving out this year. Um, so when we come back, we will discuss a little bit more about that. Um, we will be right back here on 88.3 The Saint. Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on 88.3. Once again, I am here with Brittany Kane from the Annual Fund Team and Sue Hannon from the Class of 1993. Before we get into a couple more questions, I'm excited to introduce the newly rebranded Alumni Weekend. This year, we're excited to welcome all alumni back to help us celebrate the classes ending in threes and eights, June 2nd through June 4th. We have a lot of great events, um, including our staple ones, the alumni and family picnic, the 50th dinner, the distinguished alumni brunch, where we'll be celebrating um, many alumni for their achievements. Um, in addition, we have a couple new events this year. Uh, one includes the decade parties where you'll be able to celebrate uh, with your classmates. We're also hosting Sienna Beverage Institute tastings throughout the day on Saturday where students in the program will lead the tastings. If you haven't heard about the Beverage Institute, it's pretty cool. Um, and it's uh, run by Dr. Dan Morardi and Krista Dennis. Um, in addition, join us for the town hall uh, with our new president-elect, Charles Seifert. It'll actually be his second day on the job. So we're pretty excited uh, to have him or we're throwing him to work. Um, so be sure to take a look at the schedule for all the new and returning events at sienna.edu slash alumni weekend. Um, and if you haven't registered, you can do, uh, do so there as well. Um, so Brittany, if you can tell us a little bit about some of the giveaways we're hosting that weekend. Yes, of course. So this year, the annual fund is teaming up with alumni engagement and anyone who donates a hundred or more to the annual fund and registers for alumni weekend will receive an exclusive Sienna alumni stein. Um, also, if you purchase a Bernie bundle before May 1st, you'll receive a Sienna alumni t-shirt. So a couple uh, cool giveaways we have going on. Um, all of this information, as Mary Kate just mentioned, you can find at sienna.edu slash alumni weekend. Um, so now that we covered alumni weekend and our giveaways, we're going to get back to Sue here. So Sue, you will be celebrating your 30th reunion. Uh, can you talk a little bit about why it's important to come back to campus for a reunion? Well, first, I'm not telling anybody it's my 30th, okay? That's what <laughs> makes me sound like super- it's her five years, five years. <laughs> yeah, super old. I'm not sure what I can convince them of, but we'll go from there. Um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy coming back to campus because uh, I remember what it was like um, when I was first there and what it looked like when I left. Um, coming back every year has been such a delight just to see the improvements, um, you know, being an annual donor along with so many of my classmates. Kind of gets us to see you know where is that money being put to use um and i think it's just a reminder of the good old days to be quite honest i mean everybody says college is the best four years of your life and and that was certainly the case for me as i am sure for many a sienna, sienna alum and um I, i'm i'm excited i get excited every year um and in the same kind of people tend to come back, which is great. We've been able to keep the bond. And, you know, even though everybody's on Facebook and Insta and all that, there's nothing like an in-person connection. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, reigns true for me. The most, most of all is to just make that connection, you know, do a toast, you know, have a drink, share a meal uh, and just sit back and have conversations, share the memories. So, um, and again, best time of my life, who wouldn't want to go back and kind of remember that again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we have a great team of Alumni Weekend Ambassadors this year um, from almost every reunion class uh, that's celebrating a milestone reunion. Um, so Sue, can you just talk a little bit about why you wanted to become a reunion ambassador um, and and what that means to you? Yeah, from, from day, well, uh, very quick story. Day one, um, I was in the car on the way up to Siena and I said, I need to change my personality or else I'm never going to make it in college and I was um, pretty much a shy 
um, student in high school. I just played sports, kept my, not kept to myself, but played sports. You know, that was my life. And I vowed that when I got to college, I would, I would just have to change that. And I tried so hard in the beginning to just be like, hi, hi, I'm Sue, you know, to my, 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 my wingmates and things like that. And that, and that grew. And it was that risk that I took that really propelled me into being, wanting to be part of the Siena community started as, you know, dorm council back in the day, went on into student government as a senior, um, couldn't wait to contribute as an alumni. It meant that much to me. I've been writing for the uh, Siena News um, uh, for my class since we've, um, I guess, since I came in existence or since we graduated. I've mm -hmm. uh, been part of all of the reunion planning committees and this year with the with the new um, ambassador uh, title, I guess, mm -hmm. um, you know, just natural. It was a natural fit for me. Um, and it's it's just I like I just I like to plan and I like to make it so that it's it's going to be a great day for everybody. And I like to be involved in things like this. I always have been, but Sienna holds special pace in my heart. So of course I want to, I want to do whatever I can to get the most amount of people to come back uh, on campus. Yeah. So it seems like you've always been very involved in the Sienna community all the way from the day you were a student to, you know, today being an alumni ambassador. Um, so what event is, um, are you most looking forward to for alumni weekend? You know, it's a tough call. I have one, I'm trying to convince one of my college roommates or uh, some of the others that I think will be participating in the golf tournament. I've never done it. Mm -hmm. So I would really, really like to do that. Um, I do have to put in a personal day. Thank you for the reminder. Um, <laughs> so I get the day off. Um, but I've always enjoyed, uh, you know, the when we can get together as a group um, with a decade party this year. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't know. Um, actually the 93, who's in the 93 decade? Is that the 93, 98? 93, 98. Yep. Okay. So we don't know the 98, but it'd be very interesting to see, um, you know, what their take is. Cause you guys just said you guys are what a year, the five years apart there too. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you would yeah. share a reunion. Be interesting to see what they have to say, but I think that intimate, um, that intimate uh, group space, is kind of like where we can kind of find each other and have those conversations. We usually try to find that space too. Um, you know, the welcome back party during the day is the kids. So we get to meet mm -hmm. uh, some of the um, student, the, the kids that are coming up, but those are not kids now, actually some mm -hmm. of them, probably not too many little kids, but maybe grandkids might be coming around. Um, but I, I really do. Um, and I actually look forward to meeting um, the new president, which I think is mm -hmm. going to be kind of exciting. Um, the last one I met was at my last reunion and unfortunately he's no longer with us. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Dr. Seifert will be at uh, almost all of the reunion events throughout the weekend. So uh, Great. we're we're really putting him to work. Um, he's excited, though. Uh, it's It'll be a good uh, first weekend for him. Um, you talked a little bit about the golf tournament. We are excited this year. Um, it's going to be at a new uh, course called Old Post Road. Um, it's in East Greenbush. It's just closer to Siena. Um, so it helps uh, make sure that people can get there and then get back to campus if they're going to the mass or the 50th dinner afterwards. Um, awesome. Thanks, Sue. And then really quick, uh, if you want to just tell us um, if we have alumni out there listening who are on the fence about coming back for the weekend, what uh, would you tell them? Come back. <laughs> it's, a, it's $110 and there are so many events um, included in that $110 it's a little something for everybody and you know it keeps you on campus keeps you moving from one one activity to another activity i don't think you're going to get bored you know between any of it you're certainly going to be well fed um you know there'll be drinks available and you know who doesn't like a party under the tent at night that kind mm -hmm. of thing um and and you know what i i just think get back on campus i was up there for a conference in november and I drove to campus and I was astounded by the improvements that had been made um, in just the three years since I had been mm -hmm. there. Um, I was down by the field, um, walking along the path, which I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then the expansion past the, the new residence hall way out there on the West campus. I don't know what you call it anymore. I forgot. Um, and driving up and in there. And it's just it's really nice to see what it's like now. Um, because of the massive number of improvements and to just be able to, you know, call it, call it my home, my home for four years, still a home and uh, still also going back to my townhouse and things like that. But I think, mm -hmm. I think it just, 
the price is right. <clears throat> Why not come back, find, you know, make those memories again, make new memories uh, with the same people you went to school with uh, 30 years ago. I, uh, it's a, it's a no brainer to me, but you know, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Um, the newest building on campus uh, that people probably haven't seen yet is Joya Hall. So it used to be it's an extension off McGuire Hall, which yeah. a lot of people used to live in um, when I don't think it was a residence hall yeah. when you were there, Sue, right? No, no it was still um, admissions. But yeah, we have a couple of 60s guys who are excited because they they lived on like the top floor of of McGuire and they're excited to see the, um, you know, improvements to that. Um, great. And in addition to all of the fun events that we already spoke about, we do have a lot of um additional ones that will help to show the new uh, spaces on campus. Um, Father Larry is being uh, very gracious and he walks every morning. He does a little walking tour of campus. So he's going to do one for us um, to show the new uh, spiritual places on campus, um, including the grotto. Uh, we have a new um, walking path called Peyton's Path um, and a couple other places as well. I really enjoyed the Peyton's Path. I couldn't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was inspired by the story behind it. Mm -hmm. And I, it's a really, really nice place for quiet reflection. I, you know, I, yeah. I just, that, that was just, that was kind of awesome to be down there and seeing that. Great. Um, awesome. So, well, there you go, Saints. Um, so thanks, Sue, for joining us today. We really hope that uh, this has inspired people to register for Alumni Weekend. Um, again, it's June 2nd through the 4th. Um, if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, um, need help with registering, uh, any of us in the Alumni Engagement Office can do that for you over the phone or through email. So um, please give us a call, uh, shoot us an email, anything like that. We are happy to help. So thank you, Sue, and thanks, Brittany, for coming on. Thanks, you guys, for having me. This yeah. is great. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.